This quick guide video provides an introduction to newborn hearing screening programs including tests commonly used to conduct the screening. A newborn hearing screening program is designed to detect hearing problems as early as possible in newborn populations. It is estimated that 1 to 3 in 1,000 births will have some form of hearing loss. This rate is even higher in neonatal intensive care units. Earlier detection of hearing problems and the resulting intervention leads to better speech and language development, communication and learning abilities, social and emotional outcomes. Many countries across the globe already implement newborn hearing screening programs. Some programs have been established for decades, while others are still in their infancy. Common across all programs are the main test types used to screen. Autoacoustic emissions and automated auditory brainstem responses. Autoacoustic emissions are found in normally functioning ears. When a sound is presented to the ear, resulting sounds can be recorded coming back out. These sounds are produced by the ear itself and are known as autoacoustic emissions. To obtain an emissions recording, a small probe needs to be placed into the ear and a sound is presented. The equipment then records the response from the ear and presents it onto a screen to be interpreted. The test environment and baby need to be very quiet as the recorded emissions are very small. Autoacoustic emissions are relatively cheap and quick to perform. They also require minimal training of staff. Equipment is often small and portable, giving a pass or refer result in under 30 seconds per ear. One of the disadvantages of OEE testing is that there is a higher likelihood compared to AABR testing that an ear does not pass the test while no serious hearing problem is present in the ear. This result can occur due to fluid being present in the ear canals. If the child is too unsettled during the test or if there's too much acoustic noise. Another main disadvantage of this test is that the emissions are generated by the cochlea. This test does not measure higher level structures in the auditory pathway and therefore the OAE test cannot be used to estimate the function of the hearing nerve or the brainstem. Automated ABR is the other test of hearing which is commonly used in newborn hearing screening programs. Electrodes are required to be placed on the baby's scalp and ear cups or probes placed into the ear to deliver the sound. The equipment then records the neural activity from electrodes and provides a pass or fur result on the screen. Its advantages are that the results are more robust than that of OAE testing with fewer ears being referred. This is because AABR is more forgiving compared to OAE towards small amounts of fluid. AABR also tests structures higher up in the auditory pathway. We are therefore given a much better idea of how the child's whole auditory system is functioning and not just the cochlea. AABR's main disadvantage is that the equipment used is more expensive and more training is needed for staff to carry out the test. There are more costs involved with disposables being used and it takes more time to perform the test. As with OAE testing, the room noise and the baby noise can still adversely affect the result. In light of these two tests and their advantages and disadvantages, countries might, depending on local circumstances, decide to implement a successful newborn hearing screening program with one or the other or a combination of the tests. The most common setup is that the cheaper autoacoustic emission is used for the initial screening and if the baby does not pass this test or refers, they are then re-screened using the AABR test procedure. It is important to note that follow-up is essential for babies who have referred on their screening test. Some publications discuss the lack of follow-up or lack of resources available for adequately retesting referred babies. Often they are discharged from the hospital before another screen could be taken place and the responsibility is given to the parents or caregivers of the child to bring the baby back to the hospital to be retested. This has the potential to miss some babies with hearing loss, where the initial benefits of early detection can be lost. This concludes this quick guide video on what is newborn hearing screening and which tests are most commonly used.